just wanted to make a quick mention of the disabled. I think it's one thing that we in the media tend to, um, I don't want to say we ignore, but in the mainstream media, for example, you'll see the Paralympics come after the Olympic Games, so there will be a Paralympics that come after the Sochi Olympics, and we'll all go home uh, and not cover it. It's not that we don't care, it's just that once a, a newspaper like USA Today has sent 50 or 60, 70 people you know, to an event uh, for a month, that we're going home. And it's going to be starting the, you know, it's going to be uh, end of February, excuse me, March Madness is coming, spring training is coming, so many things that, that a newspaper has to focus on. And maybe there'll be one person covering the Paralympics for USA Today or a couple people. But, and uh, the networks will have one person. But the fact that these uh, events exist and the fact that we do know they exist, you all know the Paralympics exist, um, this is something that wasn't happening a generation ago, and you should know that and, and be aware of that and, frankly, revel in it. And even if you don't turn on NBC to watch the two hours of the package coverage of the Paralympics, uh, that's okay. But you certainly know some of the names, sadly now, of course, tragically, Oscar Pistorius in the news for something entirely different. But such a hero at the London Games competing in the London Olympics, not in the Paralympics, but the London Olympics, uh, with, the, with those two blades of steel, uh, um, the blades on his, on his feet and what a message it sends when these Paralympians, be they wheelchair athletes or um, in other ways uh, disabled, that they send messages to every girl and boy around the world who also is dealing with a disability, that the world is a place for them and that there is an opportunity for them. So I would maintain that sports is really leading the way in the story of the disabled and that is a story that's just beginning to be written. We are on the, at the beginning, just at the, the genesis, really, of the story of disabled sports. And for those of you who cover sports and want to be uh, involved with the sports media, that's something to keep an eye on. Because the respect that I have seen in my career from people saying, what's the Paralympics? I'm not covering that. You know, disabled athletes, and not being disrespectful, just, just this is just the way people thought 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Now it's the ultimate respect. And I think we, it shows, I'm sure many of you have seen this commercial, the, uh, the really cool, it's a beer commercial, I believe, shocking sports beer commercial, um, that uh, the guy's playing wheelchair basketball. Do you know that one commercial? And you're watching it, and the one falls over, and I'm getting the hang of this, right? And then the end of the commercial, uh, all but one stand up and, t and, and get out of the wheelchairs and start walking off the court. And of course, there's one man that's still in the wheelchair, and he rolls off with them as they walk with him. And of course, the the whole point is that these are friends of this man who's in a wheelchair, so they're going to learn how to play wheelchair basketball for him. You know, it kind of gets you every time. But a, a mainstream commercial that is about wheelchair basketball, that never would have happened 10 years ago. So again, sports taking us to this conversation, as I mentioned, and sports taking us to a place that, a conversation that we should have, that uh, around living rooms and family rooms and basements, we should be talking about these things. And I'm proud of of the big world of sports for, for having these, um, ha giving us these opportunities. You know, I, obviously some of the things I've talked about here are bad news. You know, Lance Armstrong, that was really bad. A-Rod, terrible, and continuing, obviously. Steroids in baseball, we're gonna have that story. You'll be well into the middle part of your careers 30 years from now, and you'll still be talking about steroids in baseball, I'm afraid, the way that baseball's attacking that issue or not. Um, and it has been bad. But sports still, to me anyway, is a reliable place to go uh, for entertainment and increasingly for education. And I think that's a little bit of what I've been talking about here, what we can learn from sports, not just cheering, which you'll be doing a lot of that. You've been doing a lot of that for the last four years with Alabama football, with your gymnastics team, with your men's and women's golf, with the softball team. I mean, that uh, goes without saying, this place is known as a, as a cradle of champions. And, and that's great, but what you're learning about sports when you watch, and even if there's something that goes terribly awry, and that's a conversation, a, a bad hit, uh, penalties, things that happen now in sports, uh, there still is a great conversation, I feel, to be had. And even as bad as it can get, and it, we know it can get bad in sports, I'm not disheartened, I'm actually encouraged. Uh, there are a lot of questions out there, and sports is one of those few places where it gives us something else, it gives us the answers. And uh, I'm a proud journalist to be able to stand before you today and say that I don't have all the answers, but I love that my profession allows me to ask those questions and try to get them for all of you. So on that note, I would love to open it up for questions. Anything and everything doesn't have to be on diversity. In fact, that's fine if it's not. 
Um, and uh, if you ask me who's going to win tomorrow's game, I'm going to say the, the guys in crimson. So that's, that's the answer on that one right away.